Buenas and half a day to our listeners on Guam and in the CNMI. It's now time for Total Health right here on Joy FM Radio, where your questions get answered by health professionals. If you have any health-related questions, we would love to hear from you. Call your questions and comments in at 472-1111 or text or WhatsApp 686-9999. If you're in the CNMI, please call 323-1113. Welcome, everybody, to Total Health. Hafaday and welcome to Total Health Live. My name is Rose Trina and I'm here in the studio with Elena Tanova. She's a nurse practitioner over at the Guam SDA Clinic and today we're talking about 13 Weeks to Joy. Hi, Elena. Hi, Rosie. Hello. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about today's, um, I guess, today's show and what we're talking about? Yes. So today is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, we have always been talking about Total Health our health, how we can get better physically. But today we're going to talk um, about emotional health. Yeah. And that's different. Mm -hmm. And emotional health uh, does require a little bit of examining of yourself, a little bit coming down to your feelings, s like deal with the feelings, solve your feelings, move on forward with your feelings. And it's not a very easy topic to talk about. Yeah, it's uncomfortable sometimes. It is uncomfortable. Yeah. And I believe we'll be vulnerable when we talk about that. But mm -hmm. so what? Yeah. Vulnerability is important. And the idea of that program um, about uh, having emotional health or 13 weeks to joy um, came with the fact that we are in a Joy FM radio. Mm -hmm. And so some people can be turned down by the idea that hey, I am not joyful. I'm not going to listen to the Joy FM radio. I don't know if you have ever met people that are not joyful. And, yeah. and there is nothing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. They're going through so much. Yeah. We live in a society that we think that we should always be positive. And if we are not positive, there is something wrong with us. And we kind of try to suppress the negativity try to stay strong in front of others, try to put a mask and say like, hey, I have it all together. But we know that in the long run, this is not so. Mm -hmm. And we have actually have to be as real as possible. We are who we are because of our emotions. And if we keep on suppressing our emotions all our lives, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we'll miss out on our lives. That's true. Exactly. So I want to talk and the Joy FM radio about not having joy and not and what can we do when we don't have joy? Mm -hmm. Is it like a disease? Is there something wrong with you if you don't have a joy? And um, we are going to talk about that every second Wednesday of the month. We are going to dedicate to emotional health. Mm -hmm. Every and second Wednesday. Every second Wednesday. We will talk about that and we will go into those moments that Usually nobody likes to talk about them. We're going to talk about uncomfortable things, uh, things that we feel that we need support with, but we don't know where we can get it, who can give it to us. And of course, the most important thing is to learn how not to question ourselves, thinking that there is something wrong with us, but actually embrace a culture in which we understand that you can't be always joyful. Even the Bible says there is a time to be joyful, there is a time to be sad. There is a time to get married. There is, there is a time for every season. There is a time. And we can't be all the time joyful. I don't know how we came with this idea that you can be joyful 100% all the time. Maybe. It's a process. Mm -hmm. But you need to grow to that point that no matter what it is thrown at you in your life, you can still turn it into a joyful moment. But we're not born with that. It's an acquired skill to have. And hopefully within those 13 weeks, every month of this year, mm -hmm. <laughs> we are going to discuss that important topic. I am very passionate about it. And usually people that have gone through a lot of difficulties and trials in their lives, they are passionate about talking about that. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that it will be as valuable for others as maybe it is for me and that we can benefit about talking about plain and important things. Yeah. You know, I've also found that um, 
I think after having gone through a few things in my life, I'm a little more open to talking about them with other people, especially people who might be um, who might be experiencing something rough that I, I went through. Like one of my cousins recently lost her mom. And then uh, it came up. We were coming up upon like the one year anniversary for her mother. And so I went to visit her once and we were just talking. And by the end of it, because we had talked, we had cried and then we had laughed and then cried some more and laughed. And I found that it was actually not only uplifting for her, but it was good for me too, you know? Rosie, you're very right. People that are going to a grieving process um, speak a different language. Yeah. You know, when you see somebody going through that, you know exactly how they feel. Oh, okay, more or less. Mm -hmm. And you know how to support them. Or even if you don't know, you know that just your presence and being there and being like the kind heart next to them, the kind hand, it's already a lot. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you today, <laughs> Um, I was um, one of our doctors. I was not able to take care of the patients, um, got stranded in the mainland, so couldn't come to see the patient. So I had to take over. And it's, you know, a bit uncomfortable seeing the patient of somebody else, wh especially mm -hmm. when they want to see that provider. And so I was talking about their cholesterol levels and their sugar levels. And, you know, we were talking about that. And at some point I will see them that they just stare at me in a blank face you know they d just don't listen what I'm telling them and so then I stop for a few moments and I'm like what's going on mm -hmm. and they're like I'm so sorry I really started eating very uh, one one of them I'll tell you but I had five patients like that today yeah. and one would say I I was trying to do on my diet and everything but then I really struggle with the loss of my mother and uh, I am going through so much and my child was diagnosed with cancer. So I couldn't really take care of myself. I neglected myself and I ate emotionally during the holidays. So no wonder my results are not as great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, lately we have been talking about whole care, holistic care, how we can talk, how we can help people to just grow in every direction but you can't grow physically strong unless you address your emotional needs yeah emotional needs do come almost first and then the physical and then mental or i don't know spiritual needs financial needs it doesn't matter how you want to put them first or, or last they're important and you can't be moving forward when you just stuff up a lot of things down in yourself that's true you need to be able, I found, I think in my case, and then also in observing other people that are going through like the grieving process with me, I've just found that if you don't deal with what's bothering you, then it, it's, it's very hard to move forward. Sometimes you don't know what it is that's bothering you, you know, because you don't take the time to just sit still and be, um, you know, after my dad died, he died in 2018. So after he died, I just kept going. You know, because there was so much to do. I had to bury my dad. He died in the middle of a semester, so I had to go to school. Um, and then the holidays came up because he died in November. And, uh, you know, it's just go, 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 go. And uh, for a while, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was just, I just felt out of sorts. And um, it was hard for me to move forward. But I think when I finally slowed down, and I took time to just be and to talk to God. That's when everything started becoming right again. You know, there are things that will change in our lives because of people that are absent. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't like he just leaves you where you are. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, Rosie. Um, unfortunately, as human beings, we are very ready to attack when, mm. you know, when our interest or our loved ones are affected. Yeah. We're like asking God to give us account why this is happening to us and why we have to go through all that. And within those 13 weeks, we are going to talk that and about that and we're going to address it in a very deep level. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, I wanted to go back on what you first said. Many people get distracted because reality hurts. Mm -hmm. 
if the reality is so painful that you wake up in the morning, you don't feel you want to get out of bed. You don't feel that you can go to the shower and you know that you have to go to work because somebody needs to pay the bills and you're a responsible person that you need to do it. And so you're kind of a uh, distracting yourself or putting many hobbies out there or putting many activities or things just in order not to stay with yourself in a quiet time. Because when you stay with yourself, and God, this is where the struggle comes real. Mm -hmm. And because we don't want to face it, we know that that's the only way <laughs> to, you know, to move forward. But because we don't want to face it, it is so painful, mm -hmm. so hurtful that we pile our life with everything else. But what it is really <laughs> very important to do at those moments. I read a book um, I don't remember the author, it was a very famous psychiatrist, and the book was called How Do We Get Sick and How Do We Get Better? And it, the, the philosophy was quite simple. We get sick mentally when we stuff up our feelings. We just, mm. we just push them away, we find distractions, and we become so good at it that we bury them so deep in our brain that we don't even feel that they're there. Mm -hmm. You know, something that we call like numbing, yeah, numbing numb. our feelings. Mm -hmm. It's like we stuff it up so deep. So nobody should come and touch it. Nobody. From time to time, we do have some triggers because, you know, the environment somehow <laughs> predisposes us to get to that little box that we have down there. But if somebody dares to do that, we are so, you know, like wounded bears, like we are ready to attack or we are ready to complain and or we are ready to s suffer deeply and really struggle. And so the idea was if you keep on suppressing your feelings, you sooner or later start having some somatic symptoms. Your body will start reacting. Your cholesterol can go high. Mm -hmm. Just because of the stress you're going and those emotions that you maybe you're not addressing or maybe you're addressing and you don't know how and you're trying and your cholesterol can go high. You can get a heart attack. You, get, you can get a stroke. You can have clothing issues. You can even have seizures from suppressed feelings. This is what the psychiatrist was saying. Is that every time when I have a patient that goes through a lot... Mm -hmm and has seizures, I want to make sure to address the emotional needs first. Of course, many times there is a physical component to that, but th he prioritized the emotional needs. Many people get into seizures not realizing why they have that. And they, they're thinking may maybe something is wrong with their brain. When they check their brains and do CT scan, MRIs, they cannot find anything. Mm -hmm. And so he realized that you can get that sick if you do not address your emotions. Okay, for most of us that we haven't gone that far, um, we, we still have to face our emotions. Yeah. And we still have to learn how not to distract ourselves. And I'm, I'm talking to you, but I have had many times in my life that I had up to six jobs. My reality was so painful that I didn't want to deal with it. And so I will go to six jobs and I will go to school. I will occupy myself. Of course, at the end, I was very productive. I advanced in my career. I advanced in, in my school. I got many titles. <laughs> but this that did not address real me. Mm. And for many years, I kind of uh, ran away from the pain until I sat down, face it, face to face, mm -hmm. dealt with that. And made something out of it. So that's why I'm very passionate about this program because uh, I am sure I'm not the only one. And from what I saw today, at least five patients were so vulnerable, they cried in my session in, in, in during the, you know their mm -hmm. appointment during time. And it's, it's just a general visit about their cholesterol and their you know sugar control, hypertension. It was just a general visit but there was so much underlined under. And I have made a point that I do not want to treat just a high blood pressure. I want to treat a whole individual. Mm -hmm. There is a whole individual with a deep story behind it that I'm deeply interested in. That's, uh, 
You know, that's really good. I'm so glad that you were able to experience that today with those five patients. And then especially considering today's topic, um, you know, 13 weeks to joy, because of course, that's going to be what's at the front of your mind, you know, and it's not just going to help you for today's show. But as you think about or as you thought about today's topic, I'm sure it definitely influenced your care for them. It did. It did. And, you know, it does really matter that I have been there before. Mm -hmm. And so I know what it is to have a life deprived of joy. Yeah. I had a foster daughter and uh, God bless her. She was the most cheerful person in the world. She was that cheerful that my <laughs> uncheerfulness uh, just did not go very well. Mm -hmm. she, she was like, come on, let's do that. God loves you. Put a smile. Be Why? Why don't you have joy in your life? Like she will come and like, just be joyful. I want to be joyful. I want to be joyful, but I am not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so today I saw my patients and I couldn't, couldn't tell them, come on, think positively. You mm -hmm. cannot tell that. You yeah. cannot like, come on, read the Bible, get better, like uh, get up yourself, uh, pick yourself up. You cannot. You need to sit down there. Hey, there are moments in life that you're not joyful. Talking about God. He was God. He was Jesus. Was his life full of joy all mm. the time? No. The Bible says that Jesus was known as a man of sorrows. A man of sorrows. Yeah. He, he, his joy was to do the will of God. Yeah. You know, he learned, how he, he, not he learned, like he, he knew how to deal with the pain. And he knew that only through pain you can have a purified character. Mm -hmm. So he used the pain in a very successful way. He also didn't have a gap that we do have. Like we have a gap between our thinking and our heart. Our thoughts might be different than what our heart wants. He didn't have that. He was like, that's the will of God. This is what I need to do. And that, that's, that's what gives me the most joy, to please the Lord. But we're not there yet. And so everybody needs to face their own Calvary. Mm -hmm. And this is what the first um, week topic is about. It's called the Odyssey topic. And uh, Odyssey, as we know, it's a very famous novel from Gomer in which he talks about so many things, so, so many wars during the Greek time. But every one of us has a novel, has this Odyssey in our lives. Every one of us has a story. And every story is so different. Mm -hmm. But we we'll all have to face our Calvary sooner or later in our lives. And I really like that topic because until I realized that, wait a bit, I'm going through so much struggle and such an ordeal. And that's my story. Let me see how my story is going to end. It doesn't look very good. <laughs> you know, pages look every time darker and darker. But maybe my story will have a different ending. Mm -hmm. So when I recognize that my life or I am a part of a story and it's bigger than me, then when you embrace that, that's the beginning of finding um, st some joy in your life. Mm -hmm. Getting to the point that you can receive joy freely. Even if the worst thing happened to you, you can still see it on the good side. And... Um, also, I like the idea of Odyssey because the first pastor, Pastor Sablan, mm -hmm. uh, he was a Baptist pastor and he was the only one that was allowed to be a Protestant pastor during the time of the Japanese occupation in Guam. Mm. He wrote a book that's called My Mental Odyssey. He re realized that. He realized how difficult it is to go through Calvary, how difficult it is to, to go through life. And how many obstacles he had to face, he and his wife. Yeah. Every morning they had to bow down to the emperor of Japan. And they had to report every single thing to the J Japanese um, uh, government at that time. So he wrote a book and I highly recommend it for those of uh, our listeners that want to go that deep. And just see the struggles of others. Nothing fascinates me more, uh, Rosie, than a difficult story. Yeah, I, <laughs> I reached. Yeah. Yes, I reached to a point that, um, OK, if I see very smart people, of course, I admire or if I see very talented people, I will stop and I will um, just 
enjoy their art and what, what they are doing. But I really reached to the point that I'm very fascinated by people that go through ordeals and odysseys. Mm -hmm. And the harder their story, the more interest it brings to me. It yeah. Well, I hear the music, so it's time for our break. Um, if you have a question and you want to call in, call us at 671-472-1111. That's 671-472-1111 if you're calling on Guam. If you're calling in the CNMI, call us at 670-323-1113. That's 670-323-1113. Or you can text WhatsApp or signal us at 671-686-9999. That's 671-686-9999. If you're texting from the CNMI, it's free. And if you're tuned in via Facebook, just leave a question in the comment section below. We'll see you right after the break. Have you ever seen a long tree standing in the middle of a field? There's something impressive about a single tree braving the elements. A forest is equally impressive, but what you notice is the abundance of bark, limbs, and leaves. When we follow Christ, we become like that lone tree. Blending in with the crowd just isn't possible. Rise up, lean into the wind, and allow God to help you stand firm. When people notice you, they should find you pointing to God. From Joy FM. Family Friendly Radio, joyfmradio.net. Alan Robertson of Duck Dynasty on a father redeemed. I was almost 10 years old before dad became a Christian. He saw the greatest damage and yet the greatest rejoicing when that change came about. He was always the kind of guy that would impact people and just had a certain charisma. But instead of using it for good, all those talents were wasted. When he became a Christian, all that crystallized into this person who was so dynamic and so engaging with people. We all have a story. We can all have the same Redeemer. From Joy FM, Family Friendly Radio, joyfmradio.net. See, si Joe Mossy, and thanks for listening to Total Health on Joy FM. We want to hear from you. Call in with your health related questions at 472 1111 in Guam or in the CNMI. The number to call is 323 1113. Text or WhatsApp us at 686 9999. And now, back to the show. Hi, and welcome back to Total Health Live. My name is Rose Trina, and I'm here in the studio with Elena Tanova. She's a nurse practitioner at the Guam SDA Clinic. Today, we're talking about 13 Weeks to Joy, and I know that you wanted to share a little bit about the topic. Um, it is a 13-part series, and it's going to go on every second Wednesday of the month instead of 13 consecutive weeks. So just wanted to say that for um, for people who are listening and who might want to tune in next week. We'll have a great guest next week, um, but we also want you to tune in throughout the year. So come back again. Yes. Uh, so, Rosie, if about our emotional health, we'll be uh, talking from the book 13 Weeks to Joy. Mm -hmm. It's a book that it is written by Jennifer Jill Schritzer, maybe some of the... Um, audience are aware of her books mm -hmm. she has written also 13 weeks to hope 13 weeks to peace and 13 weeks to love mm. because we all struggle sooner or later in our lives we all go through seasons in which we don't have it all together and we don't have we are not always joyful we don't always feel loved we don't always feel at peace so it is important to address uh, those spiritual qualities mm -hmm. and um, uh, she started this program in which i tuned in and i really really liked it and i have been doing that program for for two years mm -hmm. once a week uh, we'll talk about those topics over the phone and people that are usually not finding any sense in life feeling that life is meaningless have no joy they will tune in and we will have a thorough discussion about that and about their problems of course in the radio we can't do that mm -hmm. but at least we can talk about that topic and if somebody's interested wants to know more they can always reach out to us the books are available online but um, the 13 weeks to joy program 
has, of course, 13 topics. And today we'll talk about the Odyssey or the history or the story that all of us, we have in our lives. And then next week we'll deal with feelings. The topic is dealing with feelings. This is when it's going to get deep and we'll get deeper right away. Mm -hmm. We'll not wait for the week 10 in order to discuss that. But we'll talk and we'll address as well the shame issue. Mm. Many of us, um, we just feel paralyzed when it comes about shame. Yeah. You know, shame is important to be addressed in order to move towards positive feelings like joy. We'll talk about growth mindset, how we can have a growth mindset instead of a negative mindset. And I have had a negative mindset for almost all my life. So I know what it is to be on that, on, on the, uh, that side. Radical security, how we can be secure that there is someone that cares for us, even though we don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the power of belonging, that we belong somewhere to someone and we mean the world to somebody. Well, we'll get there. We'll talk about an interesting topic. It's called post-traumatic growth. Usually we know oh. post-traumatic, right? Yeah. A, a post-traumatic syndrome in which we know what happens. And especially in Guam, we have many um, citizens that have gone through military, they have witnessed a war and they know what post-traumatic stress disorder is. Mm -hmm. But there can be a post-traumatic growth and we rarely talk about that. Yeah. Science nowadays really work on that. And uh, everybody, every one of us need to really work on our coping strategies, mm -hmm. how we can grow out of that. Because you cannot prevent all the difficulties you're going to go through life. You can't say, oh, nothing bad is going to happen to me. Yeah. We're not in control. And since we are not in control and we get involuntarily in it, we can learn how to grow out of it. Mm -hmm. But of course, you need some tools to get there. Mm -hmm. We will talk about that topic. Then we'll talk about crazy compassion. How people that are have been so wounded, how they become so compassionate that nothing can stop their compassion. Have you noticed that people that have suffered and go through a lot of pain, they become the most compassionate people? Yeah, there are people that come to mind right now. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we had a God that he was so powerful, so amazing. He went through a horrible, horrendous death. But he has so much love and so much compassion at the same time. Pain produces compassion. Mm -hmm. And maybe you would rather not have a compassion and not have pain. But compassion can bring to something more meaningful in your life than anything else that you have ever, you know, had to deal with. Mm -hmm. Compassion brings the best in you. We'll talk about that. We'll get to that point. Then we'll talk about loneliness. Loneliness is a topic that we don't want to talk about that. Maybe not many people want to hang out with people that are lonely. They think that loneliness brings the worst in you. However, we will look at loneliness in a different perspective because um, Amy Carmichael says that loneliness is a prerequisite to leadership. Oh, no that's leader, interesting. right? I, I actually embraced loneliness like mm -hmm. for, for many years. I fought it so badly. I'm like, I don't want to be the, but when I embraced it and I realized that it is so important to be, Sorry, you know, lonely, I realized that loneliness can actually bring the best in us. Sorry, that's my sister. She just walked into the studio. <laughs> yeah. Hello. She walked into the studio and I haven't seen her for a few months. Oh, you we're see, talking about loneliness. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're really, like, really good friends. And then, um, yeah, we just, we call each other sisters. I missed her so much. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm yeah. so glad it is an important moment. Thank um, you. Sorry. Go ahead. Of course. Of course. Um, then we'll talk about freedom and how once we don't have the chain of everything that holds us back, now how do we do without freedom? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the free will, the, the freedom of expressing our emotions. We can go on the other side, like being too open, talking about that very openly. Um, so we would talk about the freedom, creative freedom. Then how may I help you is the next topic for week 11. 
how we can help others that go through the same, uh, how we can have a gratitude towards God for everything that he has allowed us to achieve and experience because God comes into the picture. When we talk about emotional health, it's very difficult to talk about it and exclude God from the picture. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know about you, but I believe most of us, we struggle with relationships. We, we talk more that we struggle with finances, we struggle uh, to achieve um, our career and, you know, get good grades in our school. But we rarely talk about relationship. And this is where mostly our struggles are. And from all the relationships that we do have, the one that we as people struggle the most is the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because many times we don't think that God is fair. We know that he's all powerful. We know he's almighty. We know he can solve any problem just, you know, with his fingers. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not happening. And yeah. sometimes you pray and God does not answer. And you mm -hmm. pray for years. You can relate to that, right? Mm -hmm. And you can pray for years and you might not get the result you want. And you start questioning God like, God, how long? Like, why? I know you can do it. So we will t talk about that because the relationship with God is the most important one. And once we realize that God is not against us, God actually has a better plan for us even we don't see it, um, we can move into a higher level of like good emotions like joy. Mm -hmm. But between before that, we need to stay where we are and even take the season and struggle and sadness until all the, those feelings can grow something, a beautiful plant in us that uh, would benefit many other people after us. And then is the power of the, the mighty power of oath. Do I say that correctly? Like when you're in awe, and it's like, wow, -E. God. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, the God, power wow, power. my story is so amazing. And I never told that of a person like I was, like I was a drug addict or I was in prison or I was a criminal, that you can make something so amazing out of me. And so that's the, the last week that we're going to talk about the joy mm -hmm. of finding the transforming power of God and how God can change even the worst situation period, the worst ever situation period. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul, he was a murderer, a murderer of Christians. I don't know any worse crime that exists over there. And he, if we had read his story until that part, we were like, wow, what a waste, waste of life. Mm -hmm. He had so many talents. He had so many degrees at that time, if we can say so. And he just wasted it. And he didn't do anything out of that. But God had a better plan. And God transformed the life of Paul in order to reach many more people for him. Mm -hmm. So our story is not over. I don't know what we are going through. Maybe every one of us is going through something that only we know what it is and God. But our story is not over. Our story is still yet to come. There are so many more pages in our book that God and us, we can write it down. And of course, the sooner we start it, the more we'll benefit from that and others. Um, but until then, we have to be prepared. We have to do some, you know, heart search preparation and to get where we need to be according to God's will. Um, you know, as you spoke, it brought to mind Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I can't remember the full verse right now, but then the end of it goes, um, plans for hope and a future. For I know the plans I have for you. Um, and then the end, plans for hope and a future. But then there's another version that says an expected end, you know? And when I read that, I was like, oh, okay. Because that totally flips my understanding of it. Because when I think hopes and a future, plans, plans for hope and a future. It's like, okay, I can hope for something better tomorrow, right? But then when I hear an expected end, it's like, it's okay. Today's pain is going to bring about something good tomorrow, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, I read a story, as you were saying that, about um, 
a boy that was in the missionary field and uh, a tribe attacked that village and burned the church and he was all you know covered with wounds burned entirely almost 100% degree and he needed some comfort and when mm -hmm. the pastor went to see that boy the pastor had no words to help him and say something like even he was speechless he couldn't give him a one small glimpse of hope in that moment mm -hmm. and the boy turned to the pastor and said pastor it's okay god never promised us an easy life mm -hmm. he promised us a safe ending mm -hmm. but he never promised us an easy life we have been suffering we are suffering and we will be suffering and you know the sooner we embrace that reality the less questions will bring and the less uh, you know <laughs> torture to ourselves will bring mm -hmm. upon because we will just know that while we are on this earth unfortunately there there is a bad reality it's not all good mm -hmm. ideally god prepared it all to be good yeah you know he we did. were right we weren't designed to die we weren't or to hurt we weren't it yeah. wasn't in our software that okay i will live 85 years and then i'll be uh, th then i'll die mm -hmm. it's not natural if i say bye rosie i will die tomorrow i won't see you anymore how, how do you take that oh we don't dear. we don't have it yeah our brains are like uh that's not right we were designed to live an eternal life and that's why death is so painful to us because it's not our reality mm -hmm. and um yes and <sighs> talking about our story and talking about everything that is ahead of us to happen sometimes our story might have different turns mm -hmm. and unpleasant ones mm -hmm. and those that we don't want them and many times I, I always say God just don't do that and then it happens and I'm like why God I pray to you I do everything you want me to do and then my life still doesn't turn the way I want mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. because we want to be in control we want to have like what we want to have in our life and we kind of uh, think that God is there to give it to us because he's a loving father and he would just give everything to us but God has better ideas every parent has a better idea about their children mm -hmm. you have seen children that they throw a tantrum there because they don't get what they want but we know if they get what they want, it will harm them. Yeah. And so we kind of have the same relationship with God. We're like, God, I think this is all I need. If you give me that, I'll be happy. And then how many times you get what you want and you're like, hmm, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a story, right? When I was a baby, um, my dad told me this story about myself a long time ago when I was a baby. I was looking at a candle and I tried to touch it and my dad told me not to touch it and I insisted. I was like, no, I want to touch it. But like, I couldn't talk back then. I cried. I cried to touch the candle. So he let me touch the fire and I got hurt and he was like, see, but then I learned. He said, I never touched candles anymore. So I think, you know, it's kind of like that incident. I, I think it's like that the whole life. We're like really... <laughs> little children with God mm -hmm. we tell God what it is better for us as if we know better mm -hmm. as if we're God and he's not mm -hmm. uh, or as if we don't think he's doing a good job we don't think that he knows how to do God and we kind of uh, tell God what to do and then we learn the painful reality that it is not so I really admire people that didn't have to experience pain because they listen to others I'm not one of those like if you put rules to me I need to break them and then I need to pay for that and when the payment comes it's really not fun yeah. and I don't know I hope I will get to the point that I will learn from others and I will not break my head over and over again <laughs> um, talking about that um, you know Rosie many times in my life I just didn't think that God understands me mm. and so many feelings were I going through especially when I struggle so much and and every time I think I will get a relief it just doesn't come mm -hmm. 
And I would even do so many exercises because I was thinking that exercise can help you mentally, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, physical. We know that. And this yeah. is what we usually talk about in other sessions. Um, and, um, and not always was happening that way. I was even telling my instructor, she was like, well, you need to be strong mentally in order to run uh, an Iron Man. I said, mm -hmm. no, no, no. I have to be physically fit so I can fix my brain. She's like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so I have tried so <laughs> many ways, you know, just to help yeah. myself when, when I was finding that it is so difficult to deal with the reality. And so many wrong things I have done, so many right things I have done in order to get to a point that I will completely reconcile myself with God. And mm -hmm. tell him, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. And whatever your plans are for me, let there be because you know better. You have created me and you know how to deal with me. You know every cell of my body. Let your will be done. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hear the music right now, so we're going to go on to our next break. Uh, if you have a question, you can always call us. If you're calling from Guam, call us at 671-472-1111. That's 671-472-1111. If you're calling from the CNMI, call us at 670-323-1113. That's 670-323-1113. You can also send us a text or message us on WhatsApp or Signal at 671-686-9999. That's 671-686-9999. And if you're texting from the CNMI, it's free. And as always, if you're um, listening via Facebook, just leave your questions in the comment section below. We'll be right back after the break. The people who listen and listen a lot might show their support when others forgot. A man on a drive, a mommy at home, they are inspired, we've heard on the phone. So you keep on listening, we'll share our heart. It just works better when we each do our part. You don't have to be Dr. Seuss to know that when someone's heart grows three sizes, something changes inside. Listener encouraged. Joy FM, family-friendly radio. Looking for a clinic for your family? The Seventh-day Adventist Guam Clinic is here for you. We provide medical, dental, eye, wellness, and physical therapy services. Other services include pharmacy, radiology, and laboratory. We accept select care, stay well, neck care, and tri care. Call now to schedule an appointment at 646-8881. That's 646-8881. Or stop by the clinic today on Ipa Road in Timuni. At the Seventh-day Adventist Guam Clinic, your health is our mission. Welcome back. You're listening to Total Health on Joy FM. Call in with your health-related questions to 472-1111 in Guam. If you live in the CNMI, we want to hear from you too. Call 323-1113 or text or WhatsApp us at 686-9999. And now, here's more Total Health. Hi, welcome back to Total Health Live. My name is Rose Trina, and I'm here in the studio today with Alana Tanava, and we're talking about um, 13 Weeks to Joy. Uh, we're on part one of the 13-part series, and it's going to feature every second Wednesday of the month with Alana Tanava. Um, and we only have 15 minutes left of today's segment, so we're just going to jump right in. And uh, question one... Elena, what events in, in your life have led you to question God? You know, unfortunately, I'm one of those people that question God about everything. I had a very um, difficult childhood. I would say abusive father, um, physically abusive. So I never imagined God to be a loving father. Mm. I always right. imagine him as somebody that is, is so strict there that if I don't do the right thing, he's going to come after me. And even though I became a believer and I knew that he somehow loved me, I, I didn't experience that love for a very long time. So every event in my life that will come and will just not be the way I really want or I hope for, I'll be like, why God? And sometimes I'll be like, why God? 
I need to go and do missionary work. Who does missionary work for me? Mm. You know, to that point that I question God every step on the way. I'm not very proud of that because as now I can, can go back and can see his love for me and how he has sustained me through all those years of difficulties. I am ashamed of myself. But I even reached to the point, as I said, because I didn't have a loving father. He loved me in his own way, but maybe he mm -hmm. didn't know better since his father was doing the same. You, you know how it is. We are all sinners that are trying to educate other sinners. It just doesn't work always. We're all so broken. So my father was the same way. He told that I'm very stubborn, and apparently I am. Uh, a school in my uh, a test in my school proved that I'm very <laughs> stubborn. So he kind of wanted to break that in me, not to be so stubborn. Yeah. And I always saw that God is trying to do the same with me. Every time I will persevere on something, I will put so many efforts, and I'll think it will come into fruition. It will just not. Mm -hmm. And so I reached to a point that I remember one time I really, really wanted something. And I really was hoping for like years for that. And when I told that I'm going to get that, it just slipped away from me. And I turned to God and I said, God, you don't love me. And I even went to the pastor and I said, Pastor, why God does not love me? He loves my sister. He loves my mother. He loves all my friends. He loves everybody I know. Every time when they pray, you answer their prayers from the first time. And I have to pray for years and years and years and every time I want. And I think you will finally grant the desires of my heart. It just does not happen. Mm -hmm. And I reached to the point, not always I was all the time questioning God and his love for me. I reached the point, and I'll be very open to the audience, that I said, God not only doesn't love me, he even hates me. Mm. That's very painful. It is. And I, I reached to the point that I said, God does not love me. I applied to 10 universities because I wanted to do my PhD. I said, well, if my personal life is not that great and I have to live in loneliness and make sense out of my life, at least my career, I want to be good at my career. Like I can be a professional woman and do great things for the humanity. And when I applied to 10 universities and top universities, Harvard, um, John Hopkins, uh, Columbia, and when they all turned me down, the last one when I was really, really, really hoping that they would take me because I really thought I'm bringing something on the table, you know. <laughs> um, and when they turned me down, I turned to God and said, God, you not only you don't love me, but you also hate me. Little I knew that God had better plans. Because if I had been accepted to any of those universities, I wouldn't have come to Guam. Mm. I wouldn't, you know, I would have had to move in those universities and study there for five, six years. And I would have missed on the opportunity to come to Guam. So God had so many, like so, so much higher plans than I imagined. And when the idea of coming to Guam started working, the I applied like one more university and that was Loma Linda University in mm -hmm. California and they accepted me right away. But what it was interesting is that this was the only university that I can do online. Oh, so wow. I could come to Guam, you mm -hmm. know, it did not stop me. So God knew that he needs me in Guam, that I would really like my job at the SDA clinic as a provider. And he, he knew that I would be very happy. Finally, my happiness started coming when I moved to Guam. And I know that's not maybe the reality for many people in Guam, but my happiness, I, I really reached my highest level of joy coming to Guam because God did answer all my prayers in Guam. It was like it's my redemption land. Uh, if somebody asked me where is my, you know, where is Canaan for me or the promised land for me, that's Guam. <laughs> and so not only I came here, but after I got accepted in Loma Linda and I started my job here, I um, was accepted in a program in Harvard, which I can do online and I have to go twice to Harvard to, to complete that program. So God actually answered all my prayers, but he answered it in a way that was like the most amazing way. And I wasn't ready for that. I was imagining that it needs to be my way. I need to be 
somewhere studying for a PhD so I can have like a great title behind my name. And I just did not have, <laughs> you know, I wasn't doing my accounts very correctly. God gave me much more than that. But I get, came to the point of questioning him if he even loves me or if he indeed hates me. If somebody else goes through the same moment and they think that uh, for some reason they're special, <laughs> you know what I mean, that God somehow Single separated them, them for yeah. a bad, you know, uh, destiny. God has amazing plans that we could never imagine. And one time, one day when we look retrogradly backwards, mm -hmm. we will understand why all this had to happen to us. Right now, we don't have an explanation. And yeah. it's just painful to go through those moments without, without a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so glad to hear about that. I didn't know about your story, like the full extent of it, but I'm so glad to hear that you're here and that you're enjoying it. But then also that you're, for, you're fulfilled. You know, you're fulfilled in your mission, but then also God is making time for you to go ahead and accomplish the other goals. He does. He does. He does. I wish I didn't question him as much, but uh, I, <laughs> I came to the point. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think you're the only one that's ever said that, you know, the only one to ever question God. I think that's something that the rest of us can also relate to. And that's so good because I think in having your story out there and in saying that some of us, we can relate to it. And then some of us will also recognize that maybe, oh, maybe that's what I've been doing. You know, and I think it's it's a good starting point for people to be able to recognize that and then to move forward in that knowledge. Exactly. Question two. Yes, of course. Okay, so if you had just a few sentences to explain why God allows sin and suffering, what would you say? Okay, I I doubt I will make it in few sentences, but mm -hmm. I'll try to be very short and very brief. Of course, how can you explain so much evil, so much pain in this world? And like having an almighty God allowing all that. Many people are turned off from a re religion because they they just cannot yeah. believe. They can't that believe that God they is good. They cannot believe that yeah. God can allow people in Auschwitz to die mm -hmm. from malnourishment. And that people had to go to such a level, like extreme level of pain and, and struggle. Well, God is not the only part of the problem. There is an enemy. Mm -hmm. frenemy he used to be a friend of God he used to be the highest rank angel and he turned against God so many times we overlook that there is another part we blame God for everything and Satan loves when we blame God for everything he kind of hides himself he goes and does something to us and then he hides and we address everything to God making God uh, looking you know this a horrible person out there that does not wish anything good for us but just to inflict us pain more and more. So when you come into reality that evil does exist, it's not only in our mind, evil does exist. And there is, there, there has been pain and there will be pain just because of that. Mm -hmm. So when there are two parties that are in a war, that th there is a conflict between two parties, Usually, you need a jury in order to decide which one is right and which one is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. And so, who is that jury going to be? It's the rest of the universe, everybody else. The rest of the universe, but how many angels went along with Satan? Oh, one third of them went, And yeah. Satan didn't just come like and say, hey, I'm the evil Satan. He started in a very strategic way saying, hey, why God is telling us that we have to keep the law? Are we like illiterate? Don't we know that there is a law? Why do we have to write it down? Why we have to see it? Why he is all the time telling us what to do? Ca can't a loving God just let us be who we are? And he started with very good reasons. You know, he would bring those reasons like we cannot believe that God wants and demands, demands authority, d demands uh, worship. And so he started like that. And when you hear his arguments, maybe. You know, he does have some point there, mm -hmm. but he got it to the point that everybody started questioning God. Mm -hmm. We started questioning God. And so when there are two parties in the universe, some on God's side and some on, on uh, Satan's side, who 
is going to decide who is right and who is wrong. Someone that can experience both. And who are those people that can experience both? Those are the people on our planet. Mm -hmm. We know what evil and what good is. Yeah. And we are the jury in which we can show the world who is right and who is wrong. And this is what takes place in our life. Odyssey actually means a great controversy. Mm -hmm. There is a gr great controversy for every single soul in this life. There is for you, and there is for me. There is a fight going on on which side we are going to be. On the side of God, on the side of the enemy. And this is what one day would explain all the suffering. Yeah. We are suffering because we are involved involuntarily into a war and that war one plays unfair the other one plays very fair yeah that's and so true and because god is a gentleman god does not force us he wants our free will he's not gonna force us to love him he needs to give us our space and we need to come into you know realization who he is and that happens to all our life realizing how amazing he is, how gentle he is, and how fairly he fights the enemy in every single situation in our lives. Yeah, and it's really like a testament to God's character because God is all-powerful and he can end this. But the only reason that it's going on is so that we can really see that God, God is right and that sin is bad. Yeah, like what would we think if God noticed Satan right away? Mm -hmm. And he, you know, spot him and he eliminated him. Yeah, people would serve him out of fear. Everybody would mm -hmm. serve him out of fear. It's like, hey, you can't go and talk something against him. He, he is like a dictator. He yeah. would just eliminate you. Mm -hmm. So God allows, allows, he plays fair, you know, unfortunately. I was, uh, he plays fair, fortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, that he allows the evil to show its reality. Yeah. And by showing the reality of evil, n n once it is over with it, there will be no more evil allowed in the universe. We are, as human beings, the only ones we will experience both. And that's why one day God will make his throne on our planet, mm -hmm. because we are the only one that we speak the language that he speaks. Yeah. And we have gone through the great controversy. Mm -hmm. I, can hear the, I can hear the music. So then we're going to go to break. Is there anything that you want to say in maybe the next 30 seconds just to close out the show? It is not easy for all of us that we have gone through periods that there is no joy, mm -hmm. like joyless periods. Hang in there. Mm -hmm. Even though you're in the valley of darkness right now, it's not going to be always like that. Yeah. There is a light. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. And if you persevere, you will see the goodness of the Lord. You might not see it this moment, but I promise you, it will be more amazing than you have ever thought. Serving on the Lord's side is always worth it. And this is the only way you can achieve your full potential in life. Nothing else will bring you more joy than knowing the real God and the way he is. Amen. Thank you, Elena. Thank you so much for today's show. Tune in again next week, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Be sure to check with your doctors before making any sudden life changes discussed today. Total Health is brought to you in partnership with Guam Seven Day Adventist Clinic. Their mission. We look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Thank you and Sijuas Masi for listening to Total Health right here on Joy FM.